Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mechanical Warriors. My name's Josh Cab. In this episode, we're going to be working on my 13B that goes in the RX-8. We've got up on the hoist here. So what we're going to be doing with this engine is stripping it down, seeing how everything's wearing inside, making sure everything's okay. We're putting some serious horsepower through this thing. So it's time to pull it down, um, clean it all up. I did have some other problems with the sealant that I used to seal the oil in, in the bottom of this motor, it's leaking basically everywhere. And the uh, gearbox that I built for it as well has done the same thing. So the sealant that I've used is just rubbish. I'm never gonna use that stuff again. I will show you what it is uh, at some stage during this video. But um, for the time being, we're gonna strip this thing down, get it all cleaned and ready to be reassembled. We're gonna put new seals on this and redo all the side seals. Uh, clean everything up and then once it's back together uh, we're going to be redoing the entire exhaust side of this engine with a, a brand new turbo so this is a G62900 so it's a 900 horsepower turbo with the T51R modification done so this thing will whistle really really loud uh, as it spools up which is pretty cool I'm pretty excited to see that it's a pulsar turbo which everyone's got their opinions about the pulsar I rate them I think they're a really good turbo especially for the price so we're going to be bolting that on and seeing how it goes um, so yeah let's let's do it let's get stuck into it we'll rip this thing down guys I'm just going to time lap time lapse this video through the whole strip down of this engine. And then once I see anything that's valuable to talk about or share with you guys, we'll jump in and um, I'll tell you the things that I find. Otherwise, I'm just gonna play some music, time, lap time lapse this through and get it done. So let's do it. got everything stripped off we're basically back down to the short block now it's time to disassemble this thing uh, check all of the seals check the rotors check the housings just check everything basically um, if everything's all right we'll assemble it all back together and um, yeah get it ready I'm gonna put all new paint over these things so it's looking really nice and fresh 
uh, and then we'll put it back in the car. Same thing for the gearbox, got to strip that, redo all the seals so we're not leaking any oil because that thing's leaking like an absolute sieve. And again, I'm pretty sure it's from that sealant that I used. So going to use a different sealant on this time round. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, after we've got all this engine stuff done, we will move on to the exhaust side of things and start strapping all that together. So let's do this again. I'm gonna time, time lapse this uh, part again, pulling this apart, and then we'll do an explainer afterwards just to explain all the parts and, and check everything over, and then we'll reassemble the engine. Let's go. Okay guys, so I have finished pulling apart this uh, rotary and have found a few problems. So problem number one is one of our studs has been snapped. You can see that it's actually snapped off. Uh, where is it? This one here snapped off in there. So that's going to have to be machined out. Now another thing, um, when I had this engine first assembled for me. It was assembled by a guy named Matt from S Garage. Do not use this guy. If, if anyone is engaged with this guy, stay away. Stay well, well, well away. <clears throat> this guy is one of the dodgiest rotary engine builders I've ever come across, ever. Um, and I unfortunately uh, bought this engine originally off him. And I'm not going to go into too much detail into what he did, but just to give you an idea of, of what's going on now. So these, these plates have only done, oh, I'm going to say around 4,000 kilometers. Not, not a lot. This engine is very, very new. Um, and I'll show you all the seals and everything to, to prove that the, even the, the housings, you can see the housings are absolutely perfect because these were brand new as well, which I had to purchase these brand new because when I got the engine off him, um, he used secondhand housings and the chrome from the housings peeled away um, and caused scoring inside the engine and it lost compression and it failed after 1200 kilometers. That was, that was his engine. Um, he also used uh, secondhand dodgy rotors that had been in uh, an engine that had detonated. There was actually embedded, embedded marks of, of apex seal uh, on the actual rotor itself. So stay away from this guy, really, really, really dodgy. And again, I'm now uh, at his mercy. He does do his own machining. He has a CNC machine, so he, he, he has uh, faced these um, these plates here. And when I assembled this engine, these were perfect, and I mean perfect. And after 4,000 kilometers, that has a lip that I can grab with my nail. All right, on all the housings, that's there. 
literally it's grabbing my nail. And that means he may have machined them, but he did not nitride them. And again, this is just dodgy, uh, dodgy, dodgy work. So um, unfortunately, I'll have to send these down south to get lapped and nitrided. Uh, and thankfully, everything else is fine with the engine. Um, I have noticed a little bit of scoring in the rotor bearings from the main rotor bearings. You can see in there. So there must have been a little bit of something either in the crank or something got in somewhere, a little bit of debris and, and scored them up. Nothing too serious. Uh, I'll swap them out when we put this back together. But as you can see from the tune, definitely running a little bit rich. You can see here. But um, no detonation events, no chattering, um, no bent seals, uh, nothing wrong with the rotors themselves. As you can see, a little bit of carbon build up, as expected from running a rich uh, running slightly on the richer side, but uh, apart from that, yeah, not too, not too bad really. So I'm going to get these packed up and sent down to Simon at Promaz and get him to lap and re-nitrite these faces here. I'm going to see if he can get me the same size studs and I'll replace these studs because obviously these are rubbish too, for the fact that that's snapped off um, just says it all absolute garbage and again this was from s garage matt from s garage garbage absolute garbage so um stay away from that guy if you are engaged with him with any type of engine build stay well 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 away and save yourself the money go and see an expert like simon from promaz and get it done properly the first time uh, don't do what I did. This guy will, he, he's a good salesman, put it that way. And um, yeah, he will convince you that he can build a motor for cheaper than anyone else, which it is cheaper. Uh, and the reason why it's cheaper is because he's using secondhand parts and he doesn't even care if them parts have been in a detonated engine. He will still use them on your engine. He will call it a race engine and he will give it to you. Um, he'll even give you a guarantee that it will uh, survive the dyno, which it will, obviously, um, but yeah, it won't survive much further past that. Anyway, so I'm going to pack all these up, uh, get them sent away, and then uh, once we get all this stuff back, we'll reassemble the engine and start fabricating all of the exhaust side for the turbo and um, the new exhaust that's gonna go on the RX-8. So thanks everybody for watching. And um, if you've learned anything from this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, go check out mechanicalwarriors.com.au. Give us a like and subscribe. We'll see you for the next one. Cheers everyone.